Well, here we are. Every single Warhammer Space Marine Legion in a nutshell. Now, my biggest thought when I saw this come up was, why didn't I think to do this? That's because I'm an idiot. That's why. Um, Bricky, I have seen several of his stuff before. You guys have requested it. My favorite introduction to Bricky was The Legend of Nip Nip. And I have known about Bricky for a very long time. I didn't know he was into Warhammer until you guys told me about it, though. The Adeptus Ridiculous podcast, everything like that. So, we're going to see his take on the Legions themselves. This was requested by Iron Kiko. And strangely enough, he didn't request something utterly deranged this time. He actually requested something that um I don't want to nuke myself over watching. So... I'm not really going to have a long intro this time. Just be sure to like and subscribe. I'm telling you guys, I have high expectations for this. Um, I have seen his factions video, so if, you've, if you're if you going to request that after this, don't, don't do that. I've actually seen that. Um, one of the things that I have come to grips with is that uh, I can't watch whatever I want to watch anymore on YouTube because um, you guys will flay me alive. In any case, let's go. Bricky. Every single Warhammer Space Marine Legion in a nutshell. Let's rock. To the people on the internet, the time has come. The, the reckoning, reckoning begins. begins. Yes. Your boy got himself a shaker cup. <laughs> <sighs> After many, many months of shilling gamersups like mad, my favorite thing play. to do, we have ourselves a goddamn shaker cup. It's nice. here. The official Bricky Waifu shaker cup. Do you see the gal on here? If it's, if it's not great at focusing, I'm sure there'll be a thing in the background. There you Skater. go. Put a thing in the background. There you Long go. white hair, absolutely. A bit more toned, abs, obviously. Yes. Bikini, hit it. Legally distinct mark on the face. Of course, she wants you to do the diddle thing, maybe, maybe. but most likely maybe. to serve in a glorious army. Legally yes. distinct? I think so. The Bricky Shaker Cup is available now. now. And you should get right it now. while it is hot. But if you're thinking, Bricky, what should I put in this? Well, how about my top 10 favorite gamer subs flavors? From number one to number 10. All Go of them incredible, it. but listed regardless. And an addendum for those that are caffeine free. Mm -hmm. This Shaker Cup is available now in the description we'll of this video. Below, you may guys. use code Bricky as well at code checkout Bricky. to get a discount on your order. A Do massive it. amount of profits goes to yours truly. And a huge thank you. Get yourself a waifu sippy cup, guys. Go for it. Thank you to Gamer Subs for sponsoring and for getting me this beautiful, beautiful cup. Go out there and get it. I'm gonna take one more sip for the camera, slow it down, throw some sexy music in there, and I'll see you guys soon. Everybody, my name is Bricky, currently stuck in the walls of the most prodigious school in the Imperium by punishment for falling asleep during class. Mm -hmm. God bless the skull of Virginia. That's an actual Many thing. of you have come across my Every Faction Explained video. Firstly, thank you. Secondly, we are here to dig a little deeper. Space Marines are the quintessential poster boys of Warhammer 40,000. Yes, when are. people think 40k, they think Space Marines. But there are many types of space marines formed from 20 separate legions. We are going to rattle them off in order and give you a quick rundown of each one. A disclaimer. Like Let's see how much I agree or disagree with his breakdowns of the legions. I will stop. Um, I'll be stopping this video. You guys already knew this is going to be a thing. Um, I'll be stopping this to put my input in. I will try not to interrupt him when he's talking about various legions, but if I get to the end of the legion, I got something to add, I will. Let's roll. Like in my Every Faction Explained video, this is a mix of accuracy and memes. Yes. If I say the Salamander's Legion specializes in hugging children and petting puppies, they aren't exactly doing that. No. Mostly. Mostly, yes. 
I would like to bet this creature. But you can infer that they care about civilians and are a bit kinder than the average space marine. A space marine being a genetically modified super soldier that's had a million new and terrifying organs shoved into them, refrigerators strapped to their bodies, yes. and are so far above the average human that they are referred to as demigods instead. Each space marine has a father. Yeah, they're actually considered a separate species, Homo astartes. Other, unlike you, a Primarch, which is basically an even bigger space marine that was forged in a lab by the god emperor of mankind. Yes. That gigantic golden dude you see everywhere who is both the leader Clean. and now the martyr of humanity. The Primarchs are his 20 sons built in a lab who lead 20 le technically 21 legions of space marines who are their sons not from a lab but rather a dissection table giving them the powers and skills of their associated primarch via a gene seed a special organ carrying the genetic makeup of their primarch and you know their seed so if jagatai khan of the white scars has the genetic makeup that wants him to go really really fast mm -hmm. then his sons the space marines also want to go really, really, really fast. fast. I should note that I am only referring to the legions this time around. If you're interested in sub factions like, let's say, the Black Templars, then it's not going to be here. However, I do have a excellent Black Templar video. I'd argue it's probably the most accurate one I can think of. It goes through the whole lore, everything about them. It's a very long video and I'll put it in the description. Just look up Black Templar video in the description. You'll get what you need. And now with the easy explanation out of the way, let us begin with our first Legion. Dark Angels. Allegiance? Loyal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Primark Lion L. Johnston. A duelist. A knight. A real asshole, I'm not gonna lie. The single word descriptor? Paranoid. The Dark yeah. Angels are mm. first Legion, hailing from the death world known as Calabam. Their Primarch, Lion L. Johnson, is what happens when you try to make the side profile Chad meme into a genuine character. He is a master tier duelist, a brilliant strategist, and an overall dick. There are few yes. situations he isn't prepared for, and few fights he isn't ready to lead head on. This makes Technically, uh, Lionel Johnson would be in the top three best duelists of the Primarchs in the, like, flat out. The Dark Angels have a very Knights of the Round Table vibe. They look like the Knights of Old with these large suits of power armor, often donning robes and hoods. Their mm -hmm. names also follow this. They have like Ezekiel, Azrael, Belial, Samuel, and so on. However, the common thing associated with Dark Angels are the Fallen, a part of their faction that turned traitor against the Imperium, and they are very heavily trying to expunge all knowledge of them from existence. Massively. Fallen? What fallen? Never heard of any fallen. Do you know about the fallen? We're gonna take you away and mind probe you to make sure you have never heard of the fallen. They definitely don't exist. And if they do exist, which they don't, we will no. find them even though they don't exist. They right. love their interrogations. They thrive in it. Yeah. Lionel Johnson is a scorched earth policy sometimes, and it's given to his sons in force, which makes sense considering that when the lion heard of a chaos primarch on a homeworld different primarch whose mom was there, he was like, Let's nuke it. The Dark Angels <laughs> are a special group where they formulate themselves into three different factions. The Deathwing Terminators, slow moving, tough phalanx. The Raven Wing, fast jet bikes and flyers. And the Green Wing, which is your standard Marines. They are a jack of all trades, but not in the sense where they're good at everything, but rather they have a lot of things that are good at specific things. Like instead of 20 people that have a multi-tool, they instead have 20 people with gigantic power tools for every job imaginable. <laughs> if you like being suspicious about everyone and everything in your surroundings, but you also like to have a whole lot of deep night type lore, run the Dark Angels. The One P. Okay, so basically, when you take a look at when you take a look at the Dark Angels, um, all the paranoia and stuff like that really came about after the Horus Heresy. And here's here's some real truth for you. If the Dark Angels at the time, had admitted to literally everyone else that a percentage of their troops had turned traitor, then they wouldn't be dealing with it now. It because back in the you know in the heyday of the Horus Heresy, there were several legions lo legions that remained loyal that had legionnaires turned to chaos. The White Scars had a percentage of their legion turn, and it started a civil fucking war right before Jagate showed up and said, no, what are you doing? We're going to be loyal. 
So it wasn't something that was unheard of, not by a by, not by a high measure. And if they had dealt with it then, they wouldn't be dealing with it now because now it's a lot it'll be a lot worse if the Inquisition found out about the Fallen. Because if the Inquisition found out about the Fallen, the way that the mentality of the Imperium has changed so much, they'd outright carpet ban the entire, the entire Dark Angels chapter as traitors because of the Fallen. Instead of, yeah, we had some guys turn traitor, we dealt with them, it's done. Peace! The One Piece is real! Our second Legion is a special one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. If you can see, yeah, <laughs> the numbers all go to 11. The Emperor's children. Yeah. Allegiance, traitor. Yes. Primarch, Fulgrim. A perfectionist, an artist, a sneaky snaky snake. And the single word descriptor, perfection. The no. Emperor's children are all about the pursuit of perfection. Perfection in all they do. Perfection in war, mm -hmm. in artistry, and perfection in every other aspect of life. Their armor is a gleaming pink, purple, and gold. Their ships have spires of gorgeous marvel and gold statues in their honor. Fulgrim is a man who believes the pursuit of perfection is the goal of all things, and I mean, look at him! Can you truly tell me that he is not perfect? The hair, the features. As Prime marks go he is the one you look at and if 40k had a guy that would give you the best sex you've ever had and never call you back this is the fucking guy <laughs> which is why this pursuit of decadence led them to the evils of chaos yes yes Emperor's children are our first chaos legion and not just a normal one one devoted to no who, you guessed it not normal. the prince of pleasure god of unspeakable excess the emperor's children in their pursuit are now horrifyingly mutated beings through slanish's great will they torture and maim to feel perfection through pain they screech and attack with sonic weaponry for perfection through sound and they slaughter aiming for perfection in war right. Fulgrim himself lost the battle against Slanesh as a demon sword corrupted his mind and transformed him into the sexy man he was no. into the sexy snake he is now he is not. a demon primarch corrupted and bringing his legion's will by himself no. as far as emperor's children go they are some bad people they do horrible horrible things to anyone and everything in fact they're such trolls that their battle cry is for the emperor despite being horribly mutated and corrupted right. if you've ever taken a little too much of a drug or or maybe the music <laughs> at the concert was too loud and you didn't bring any earplugs or whatever the reason you just take all those things and you dial it and you dial it and you twist it and the knob breaks and that is the Emperor's children. Pretty God much. Is dead. I have nothing to God, add to that. Yes. And we have killed him. The Iron Warriors. Yes. Allegiance, traitor. Primarch, Percherabo, a warlord, a siege smith an incel. Single word descriptor? <laughs> siege. Continuing yes. the trend of our Chaos Legions, we have the Iron Warriors led by Primarch Percherabo of Olympia. To understand the Iron Warriors, though, one must first understand Percherabo. Yes. A man so yes. bitter, coffee beans run for light. A man who hates the world and everyone in it. Who never got recognition for his deeds. Who hates his brothers and hates their accomplishments even more. Someone so laughably petty, so incredible incredibly no. bitter that he goes full circle to becoming likable why yes because he's competent the horus heresy we didn't talk about the horus heresy intermission so horus was the emperor's favorite son right you know so the emperor walked into his room <laughs> or said dad dad i just gifted 150 subs to amaranth and she said my name a ton and she loved me for it i really think that i might get to meet her one day no. and it, Kind of played out something like this. Your feelings for her are not real. They are real to me! And then <laughs> it started playing out a little bit more like this. Let the seas boil. Let the stars fall. Yeah. Though it takes the last drop of my blood. Yeah. 
So Iron Warriors, <laughs> the Horus Heresy wouldn't have gotten shit done without Peter Turbo. Imagine yes. an entire faction that is the personification of brutal industrialism, where you serve the Legion until your dying breath. You build and you kill and you siege yes. and you kill and you literally summon demons just to take them and trap them in machines and yes. use them as cannon fodder. This is a thing they do. They summon demons to trap and use as shock troops. The Iron Warriors are siege warfare incarnate. They are heavy weapons. They are tanks. They are turrets. And they don't die. They hate Imperials. They hate Imperial Fists. Do you need a pacifier, Iron Baby? No! No, I don't! They are bitter incarnate. Percherabo and the Iron Warriors don't serve the Chaos Gods because they like them. No. They serve them because fuck you. Come on, guys. <laughs> Let's go. Not another speeding ticket. I'll fight it in court, but I don't- Okay, seriously? Perch Raba wasn't wasn't better about his brother's accomplishments. He was better about the fact that his brothers would get these candy-ass assignments compared to the bullshit that he was going through. <laughs> and they would- Like, the best example I have is the Lair Temple and- you know, Fulgrim. Fulgrim sits there and loses 700 troops taking down taking down the Lair civilization. A bunch of city, uh, you know, a, a species that, you know, admittedly was a tough fight, but at the same time, their cities weren't fortified. They were basically doing urban combat against the Lair. They lost 700 troops and there was all these accolades and all this other kind of help. Percherabo couldn't even get a fucking thank you. Perturabo would lose thousands of his legionnaires, cracking these nuts of just these impossible fortresses, and he wouldn't even get a pat on the head over it. And eventually that got to the point where it pissed him off, considering he hated warfare. I don't think they're going to accept gotta go fast as a medical condition. The White Scars. Yeah. Allegiance, loyalist. Primark? Jagatai Khan, a speed demon, a plane strider, a roast god. Single word descriptor? A roast god is speed. Halen yes. from Chagoras. The White Scars are all about speed. They love yes. melee, but they love it even more when they are doing it from a motorcycle or land speeder. Yes. Or, honestly, just running really damn fast. Yes. The White Scars are honestly forgotten about a lot. And that's yeah. lore accurate. They are a legion that doesn't seek the recognition or glory from the combat they engage in. They engage in it because it is their duty and because they love it. Not in the insane slaughter enjoyment of loving it, but in the thrill of the fight. They are right. known as the laughing killers because they ride into battle with a smile on their face and a chuckle in their throat. And as you can tell by their Primarch's name, they are Mongolian based. Yeah. Yes. horses and replace them with motorcycles and land spears and that's your style they are heavily based on the old times of genghis khan and consider this is 40k and everybody's evil you know that fits the white scars are actually physical scars on their body going back to their heritage on chagoras the khan himself is kind of a dickhead but but a reasonable <laughs> one he thinks ahead he's intelligent he's patient he is often underestimated because he doesn't scream his accomplishments from the rooftops which is he is also the Jeffrey Ross, the Roastmaster Supreme of all the Primarchs. He burns better than anybody. It's what makes him and the White Scars dangerous. His skills are kept at bay, only to be truly shown when the time is needed. The White Scars are a forgotten legion often, but that doesn't diminish their accomplishments. No. All it does is surprise those who underestimate them. Speed, awesome Mongolian vibe they got going on. And if you really like to stab people, that's the white scars for you. Shameless thirst break. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so seriously, during the Siege of Terra, Mortarian sits there and, and starts fighting Jakatai. And Mortarian's in full, he's in full Nurgle mode. And he's beating the crap out of Jakatai, but Jakatai Khan's just sitting there, literally just just shitting all over him <laughs> the entire time, making Mortarian screw up because he's basically saying, "Look, I came out here to fight the leader of your legion. Where's Typhus? Who the fuck are you?" And it just it was perfect. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, bitch. The Space <laughs> Wolves. Allegiance, Loyalist. Primarch, Lehman Russ. A Viking, a savage, a the Undertaker. No, Single word descriptor. No. 
Wolf, 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 wolf. There's so many goddamn wolf units. Skater, how many units in the Space Wolf Codex have the word wolf in their name? 75. Name. Oh. The Space Wolves are the Sixth Legion and hail from Fenris, a frozen wasteland of a world with their Primarch, Lehman Russ. I don't really need to spend a whole lot of time talking about the Space Wolves because it's very obvious who they are. They are right. the second most like obvious what their shtick is legion in the 20 legions besides the world eaters when you look at the space wolves behind what do you see do you see vikings in space yes. you've done it congratulations you have found vikings in space but they have as much in common with a regular marine as an old day viking with, with like a roman soldier you see as a space marine your body is so enhanced that you filter out poison and so you can't get drunk the space wolves distill a special mead out of a horrible poisonous plant that would kill a normal human so they could get drunk. They have right. fangs in their mouths. They sometimes Fantasy cannibalize likes. their enemies. Yeah, yeah they, sometimes they eat people because they gain knowledge about them from there and about battle plans. The space wolves are savages. They're raiders, they're Vikings. But despite all of this, they are loyal to their core. Lehman Russ is an egotistical guy who just shouts stories and tales of his accomplishments everywhere they can. Right. But at the same time, he was so damn loyal that instead of gunning down his foes, he hit him with a fucking backbreaker to show his devotion, his devotion to wrestling. Uh. And you want Vikings in space, you found it. Play the Vikings in space. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. Lehman Russ was an abject dick. We have no choice. Build that wall. Build that wall. <laughs> build that wall. The Imperial Fists. Allegiance? Loyalist. Primarch? Rogel Dorn. A builder, a phalanx, and he needs a hand. Single word descriptor. Fortify. The Imperial yes. Fists are led by Primarch Rogel Dorn in their homeworld of Inwit. However, they themselves are actually a fleet-based chapter, with their main source of recruitment coming from an enormous moon-sized ship called the Phalanx. The Fists are a chapter you think of when you think of duty. They love to serve. The love to serve and the inability to be moved. Rogel Dorn is an architect, a master builder, and basically a rock in brain and body. A lack of humor or ability to lie shows that he is as blunt as the weapons of war he creates not the swords he makes but Pretty like much. blunt strong weapons the fists are the same take your archetypical american marine style look a buzz cut a hard sense of duty and then throw in some power armor and a love for building defenses and you have the imperial fists they are that, immovable when you find a spot they're ready to defend you you can't breach them their knowledge of defensive warfare is paramount without them the horus heresy would have been so much more effective but thanks to their insane and immovable tenacity the imperium lives today mm -hmm. and let's not forget that iron warrior and imperial fist rivalry want to know why the iron warriors are so bitter these guys are the reason why hey guys bring the thing where is he going killed me hey guys we missed get another dorn and Pertrabo <laughs> are basically two sides of the same coin one is just a bit more level-headed and got better jobs if you want to be defensive to be good at everything space marines are good at bolters heavy weapons vehicles you want a classic military fighting force start fisting i am having a very bad day Okay, so a larger part of the reason was because they, they shared such similar styles in terms of what they did. They were both specialized in siege, and, and they were both specialized in that type of warfare. But the difference was the Fists got accolades, the Iron Warriors just didn't. Um, and... Dorn was not exactly, he didn't appreciate anything until literally, um, the Iron Cage happened. Hey, this, today, is one of the worst I like Dorn, but I hate Dorn. Oh boy. Oh boy, here we go. The <laughs> Night Lords. Allegiance, heretic. Pri Prophet, calm down. I can already see you in the comment section. Calm down, Prophet. Mark Conrad Kurz, a sadist, a vigilante, the presso espresso. Single word, 
fear. The yes. Night Lords are my favorite legion, hailing from Nostromo and their Primarch, Conrad Kurz. They are a traitor legion from a planet known as the Sunless World or the World of Endless Night. Nostromo is a horrible hive city that is known for being host to some of the worst gang violence, murder, and working conditions around. The only thing keeping the population in check is the suicide rate. The Night Lords followed in the footsteps of their Primarch, a man who believed in a twisted sense of justice and that the only way to make humans compliant is through fear. Fear. The yes. Legion's lesson has been lost on them as their ranks were repopulated by gang members, murderers, arsonists, torturers, and other words I can't say on YouTube yes. as young as 12 years old. Murderers before they were even teenagers raised to become demigods. Now fear is what they sow and flesh is what they reap. The Night Lords are scared. Gum. They are the exact opposite of all other legions. They torture and they maim and they flay because they think it's fun. They run away often yes. so they can come back and kill you with more numbers. They prey on the innocent and the weak. They kill normal civilians because it's easy and flee any battle where they don't possess overwhelming odds. They are the antithesis of normal space marines. They are scum. One time, a world did not comply to their demands, so they raided one of their ships and brought it into atmosphere. The crowds cheered and clapped as it appears that they had won the battle, and the airlocks opened, and the skinned and flayed bodies of the crew were thrown down in the populace. In other words, uh. A legion of gangers and criminals. Add together a heavy Slavic influence to them. <laughs> you've got my favorite faction. You have not done the dish. Okay, seriously, Conrad curses a beast. Um, I said, I said, uh, the lion would be in my. If you could give me a top three, I'd say the lion. I definitely say Conrad cursed. The last one. Sanguinius. Just for five years. So embarrassed when Perturabo people come over here. Perturabo, you killed them. Vampires don't do dishes. The Blood Angels. Allegiance? Loyal. Primarch? Sanguinius, yes. an angel, a vampire, a dead ass oh. motherfucker. Single word descriptor? Blood. The Blood Angels are Ninth Legion, hailing from the homeworld of Baal, with their Primarch. Sanguinius. The Blood Angels are a tragic tale with one of the best Primarchs, one beloved by almost everybody, a genuine angelic figure who led his people to glory, killed by the hands of the traitor Horus before the Emperor's eyes. Maybe? We'll see what happens with the Siege of Horus. The death of their Primarch led the entire Legion to madness as their gene seed malfunctioned and created something known as the Black Rage. The Blood Angels degrade over time, experiencing something called the Red Thirst, yes. which gives them a genuine vampiric thirst for blood. As their minds degrade and break down, they get angrier and angrier, becoming berserk killing machines with no other goal. Get back into it than to tear everything in sight apart. But they don't see it as that. No. They see themselves there, at their Primarch's demise, with Horus in sight. And to them, it's time for vengeance. Yes. That Space Marine over there, that Chaos Space Marine, that's Horus. Yes. Kill him. That Orc War Boss over there, Horus. Kill him. Kill him. That Tyranid Swarm, 1,000 Horuses. Horai. Kill them all. Did your toast come out a little bit burnt? Horus sabotaged your toaster. Destroy the toaster. Destroy it. Do it. Do it. Kill your toaster. Do it. This slow, debilitating <laughs> disease takes over the blood angels, and it gives them this angelic, vampire, and Catholic-inspired imagery. They have chalices of blood. They rest in coffins and can even use psychic powers to sprout angel wings from their bodies. They are a tragedy through and through, and the only thing that will look more tragic are the mangled bodies of those they come in contact with. I got a diesel engine. The Iron Hands. Allegiance, loyalist. Yes. Primarch, Ferris Manus, a machinist, an inventor, and... Contrary to perfect belief, guys, I am not Ferris Manus. I appreciate the comparisons, though. I am definitely not Ferris Manus. Not a great head on his shoulders. Single word? 
Bionics. Bionic! Oh! The Iron Hands are from the home planet of Medusa and their Primarch, Ferris Manus. Does Ferris Manus have an iron hand? You fucking know he's got an iron yep. hand. The Iron Hands believe that the flesh is weakness. But despite all of their enhancements, despite all you the things that made them demigods, Odin. replacing some of the flesh with bionics will allow them to serve the Emperor more. They go harm into vehicles and dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts being giant walking sarcophagi that have wounded space marines piloting them from the inside. Vehicles, metal upgrades. These are the things that make up this legion. Their tech marines have servo arms sticking out from all directions. They have a wide array of mechanics and extremely often replace limbs with metal ones, serving all kinds of different functions to deal with their enemies. Yep. The Iron Hands are also not particularly nice. Uh, they're kind of assholes. Yes. I mean, marines are already normally pretty big assholes, but, but they, they're a little bit up there because of their... Ugh, flesh, ugh, civilians made of flesh, <laughs> ugh, ugh. Because you see, the flesh is weak. Flesh is corruptible. Bionics, the strength of the machine is pure and cannot so easily be corrupted. Yes. So if you want people who have this little techno fetishistic vibe to them that love their vehicles and their walking coffins, hit up the Iron Hands. You understand, Commander? I was never here. Legion 11. <laughs> Why, hello there. I have returned from um, <laughs> touching grass. I know. I'm pretty cool with the grass touching. And... Now let's continue our Warhammer lecture. Yeah, let's go. Yes. Ruffles my jammies! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's going on here? I am a super the World Eaters, Allegiance, Heretic, yes. Primarch, Angron, a butcher, a slaughterer, like extremely, earth shatteringly, unreasonably fuck ass man. Single word descriptor, anger. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Are you mad? Do you just fucking hate everything? Do you want to murder everything in sight Pretty and get much. rewarded for doing so? Then you should join the World Eaters, home planet of Nuceria mm -hmm. and Primarch Angron, who if the name- A home planet that they wiped out the fucking population of. Didn't suggest is real fucking angry. Angron was raised a slave, forced to fight in gladiator pits. When he Thanks refused, so they shoved old world tech into his brain so that if he ever felt any emotion other than anger, it caused him extreme pain. All his sons, wanting to be like their dad, also put a version of these nails in their brain. So now you have an entire legion who literally feel unimaginable pain if they are feeling any emotion other than anger. Slap them with a freight train of armor, two goddamn chainsaw axes, and you can see what's gonna happen. Yes. It's no wonder they're corrupted by corn. They're honestly a surprisingly sad legion that I actually screwed up in assuming that they were all just angry murderers. I mean, they are but they didn't start out that way. No. Their corn corruption degraded their intelligence, their free will, and made powerful warriors into arguably even more powerful warriors, but blunt, like frothing at the mouth psycho warriors. Right. The world eaters, like I mentioned, the space wolves, they, they wear their concept on their sleeve. They are angry. They want to kill things. They want to kill you and maybe some of their friends. And that's... That's the faction. They're right. red, they're mad, they're gonna run at you and cause death. If you like that, you play the world eaters. Or you like it because they were, you know, at one point a lot better than that. Most of Warhammer was a lot better than that. I was once a lot better than that. That was when I was in college. I didn't finish college and neither did Angron. Aeon <laughs> is it, Imus, it is Aeon. Angron is the, seriously the saddest tale out of all the Primarchs and uh, if you say that Magnus is actually the saddest tale, I will fight you. Um, Hail Caesar, if it's not done by sunrise, I'll cut your balls off. The Ultramarines, <laughs> Allegiance, Loyalist, Primarch, Rabute Gilliman, that's how, yeah, that's how it's said, an analyst, a diplomat, a blueberry boy scout, single word descriptor, duty. When you see Logistics. space marines on a box or just space marines and promotional material, notice how they are always colored blue. These are the 
blue space marines. The, these ones here, the Ultramarines, who right. hail from the world of Macrog with their Primarch Rabute Gorilla Man. Ultramarines are, are the white <laughs> bread of space marines. The, the grilled chicken with salt and pepper. This is by no means an insult. No. They are plain Jane, but that's also because they are so goddamn good at their job. Their skill for warfare is paramount, but so is their ability for leadership. Gilliman for a while was a damn boring Primarch for all the reasons he was great. Because no matter how hard you try, you don't don't win a war without logistics, without supply lines, without trade routes, without infrastructure and economy. You don't win anything without all that stuff, and Gilliman knows it. Which is why he has one of the largest standing empires in the Imperium, named Ultramar. Which is right. why his sons are the most recognizable of all the space marines. Which is why the only thing that rivals the weight of their victories is the weight of their egos. They are good at everything and bad at nothing. They are great at everything. Other legions can do other things better than them, but they are good at everything. The most interesting thing about the Ultra can, Marines is their that. characters, as they are all now inflicted with various amounts of Ultra Depression for many reasons. <laughs> Gilliman is, at the time of recording, the only playable Primarch currently on the tabletop, and the only one that has returned to the 41st Millennium for the Loyalist side. Bring he the took lion. one look at what his empire has become, and immediately <laughs> wanted to fucking die. Being forced to lead everything he once hated, an Imperium rotten to its core, with his sole responsibility to save it is kind of what makes him interesting. They are a perfectly standard legion with perfectly standard ideals and great if you want a simple, clean slate. Uh-oh. Yeah, the, the Ultramarine's biggest strength is in administration. That, like, they are like any other space marine when it comes to warfare. You solid 10, if you're familiar with D&D terms, they have solid 10s across the board, except in administration and logistics. In those categories, they are unparalleled. So, there's that. Dinky, funny poop, poop funny, woo! The oh, Death Guard. God. Allegiance, heretic. Primarch, mortarian. A reaper, a poison. A bitch. An ungodly stench. A Single bitch. word descriptor, rot. The Death Guard hail from Barbaros with the Primarch Mortarium. The 14th Legion were known for their incredible resilience to damage. That's a lot of damage! They were. Where the Imperial Fists were defensive thanks to tactics and posturing, the Death Guard were resilient because they could take a punch or, or a gut shot or, or a cannon <laughs> to the chest and, and just keep on moving. They are slow, yet they are resistant, which was only confounded as a Death Guard captain Typhus, codename Dickhead, sold them out to Nurgle, god of rot and decay. Right. Now, the Death Guard are a Nurgle-worshipping infected legion. Okay, so here's the thing. I, um... Typhus sold them out to Nurgle at Mortarion's expressed request. I fucking hate Mortarion. Whose ability to feel pain and take damage has all but just gone away. They wade through gunfire, able to kill normal Marines 10 times over and continue unharmed, all while spreading rot and disease in the name of their dark, very stinky master. Where the Death Guard enter, plague spreads. Right. People get sick and they die. They spread debilitating disease to all around them. Why would a Legion need to be anything more than very tanky when their enemies are falling over, puking, firing out of both ends, and having their skin peel off just by their presence. Entire worlds infested with a zombie rot, swarms of insects that eat flesh and metal alike, all while the Legion advances slowly. Pain. You know what? This is the only picture that I really like because the tower dying. Painfully, allowing the disease they spread to take its toll before they reap the lives they believe belong to them. And look at Mortarian's model, dude. The man is baller as fuck. No, a gigantic he, no, not. moth with a gigantic scythe. Come on now. The Death Guard. For my neck! He's the bitch. Trek! I'm gonna fucking kill myself. The Thousand <laughs> Sons. Allegiance? Heretic. Primarch? Magnus the Red. A scholar. A sorcerer. A fucking nerd. Single word descriptor? Magic. The Other single word descriptor? Massive fucking oops.
Thousand Sons hail from their homeworld of Prospero, with their Primarch Magnus the Red. The final of our four major Chaos God factions, the Thousand Sons are disciples of Zeech, the Changer of Ways. Heavily inspired by their Egyptian theming, the Legion themselves are slaves to the god of trickery and change, most of them no longer even having a physical form, reduced to just dust, piloting yeah. suits Rubrics. of armor at the whim of a sorcerer leader. The Thousand Sons do not deserve their fate. There's a common joke that Magnus did nothing wrong. This is untrue. He yes. has done much wrong. However, he is very sympathetic, mainly because the Space Wolves and Lehman Russ sought to end their rivalry through the annihilation of their legion, escaping only through the assistance of the Changer of Ways. A rivalry that the wolves themselves started, fostered, encouraged, and then ultimately carried out to fruition, and only really won because they outnumbered the Thousand Sons close to six to one and brought a shit ton of specialized troops. And even then, the Thousand Sons fought half the battle with their arm tied behind their back. If you don't realize this, I cannot stand 30k's wolves i like 40k wolves i hate 30k wolves is and forever changed because of it meanwhile magic is their main tool take some lovecraftian style abilities the eyes everywhere mm -hmm. and potent spells to be cast at their foes where these are bolts of psychic lightning reversing time itself opening up portals to unreality or changing the very fabric of the universe the thousand sun sorcery knows no bounds and they are very good at it yes, you're a fan are. of like wizards your classic style of spell caster and you want a ton of them combined with a tragic backstory and a primarch who like mortarian looks fucking baller and the thousand sons are for you you fucking asshole there's no way you're a fucking cheater it's such a sore loser you're a cheater my dad works at nintendo the <laughs> sons of horus or the luna wolves or the black legion allegiance Heretic, yes. Primarch, Horus, a warlord, a treasured friend, or the traitor himself. Single word descriptor, assault. Yes. The Sons of Horus are the formal name of Horus's legion hailing from the world of Chthonia. The Sons of Horus themselves were assault troops. The strength of their attack was some of the most powerful in the legions. While the White Scars may favor speed for their strikes, the Sons of Horus were known for their overall offensive power. It was even said that if the Sons of Horus met the Imperial Fists, they would be at a stalemate for eternity. Mm -hmm. However, the Sons of Horus are no longer because, well... Yeah. They are now instead <laughs> the Black Legion, led by Abaddon the Despoiler, who claims to succeed where his father failed. The Black Legion are still an offensive and assault-based force, but they act much like the Ultramarines, but for chaos. Your Pretty standard much. black and brass space marine who are known for recruiting in all different kinds of avenues. Anyone can become a member of the Black Legion. Anyone can swear allegiance to the War Master. You gain <laughs> favored by not just one, but all four gods equally. They're famous line let the galaxy burn is the best way to describe them it doesn't matter what the outcome is so long as the imperium dies the black legion has done its job they are a mm -hmm. legion formed from hatred and spite with a clear goal in mind as the dark gods are calling and the black legion are sure to answer hello do you have a moment to talk about our lord and savior jesus christ prepare for anger Prepare for anger. No. <laughs> the word bears. Allegiance, heretic. Primarch, Lorgar Aurelian, a preacher, a fanatic, a choir boy. A piece of shit. Single word descriptor, zeal. If the Black Legion answer the call of the Dark Gods, what if- I wouldn't call it zeal. I would not use zeal to describe the word. The, well, the word bearers himself, but not Lorgar. If instead you decide to call the gods first, well, then the word bearers are for you. The 17th Legion, led by Primarch Lorgar on the planet of Colchis. <laughs> Originally obsessed with worshipping the Emperor of Mankind as a god, they found that despite his divinity, he was not worthy of worship. Because... You know, he raised their equivalent of Jerusalem to the ground for Pretty daring much. to worship him. Like, 
Could you imagine if, if God actually showed up and was just like, Jerusalem is stupid. It just, it just destroyed the whole thing. Like, what would that do to your head? But there are gods that want worship and will reward those who do. The word bearers mm -hmm. are chaos worshipers to a T. All chaos gods. They specialize in demonic rituals, the summoning of demons, and the mutual possession of their own troops. They, they specialize in absolute dickishness for the sake of dickishness. Just flat out. There is no other way to describe them. They are dicks for the sake of being dicks, and there's no other reason for it. Like, Horus might have been their Primarch, but Erebus is their spirit animal, okay? And Erebus was a dick for the sake of being a dick and no other reason. They welcome demons to their bodies to fight as one. They exalt the dark gods themselves for aid, and guess what? They answer. In the world of 40k, Satan doesn't just call you back. He hops in his GT Mustang and he crashes on your couch. In the world of 40k, your rituals will end with genuine results. The yeah. word bearers know this. They know through sacrifices, through devotion, through dark baptism, the gods will answer and they will be rewarded. So they use it. They bring forth demons. They bring forth possessions. They bring forth the power of the neverborn, the damned and those that hide in the dark to bear against the Imperium. Lorgar sits there, smiling, as the truth yeah. he always knew, the existence of gods and the importance of faith is a reality, and it is a tool he is using to rend the galaxy. Dear Sir Stroke Madden, I have so much hatred for Lorgar, it bear uh, I can't go into it. I will be, in I will be ranting until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, fire! Exclamation mark. Fire! Exclamation mark. Help me! The Salamanders. Triple F. Friends, fire, family. Allegiance, loyalist. Primark, Vulcan, a forge master, a behemoth, a very huggy boy. Yes. Single word descriptor, fire. The Salamanders hail from Nocturne, a volcanic planet home to their Primark, Vulcan. They are the largest of the space marines, not due to numbers, but rather size. Mm -hmm. Vulcan is it, huge. He is an enormous slab of beef, by far the <laughs> largest of all the Primarchs. However, don't let his size fool you, as he is also the kindest. Salamanders have the juxtaposition of looking frightening, being larger than other marines, while also boasting an ashy, like, coal color skin and blazing red eyes, while simultaneously carrying around all manner of flame weaponry. So your yes. average civilian might be spooked, but in reality, they are by far the kindest of all the legions to those civilians. Vulcan believes that to safeguard the Imperium is to, at the end of the day, I mean, safeguard its people. So unlike other legions who put their lives far and above the average human, the Salamanders spend significantly more time trying to save them, often yes. taking numerous losses by doing so. They are very independent as well. They're forgers and blacksmiths, maintaining their own weapons and crafting versions of it. They also yep. have the very rare privilege of being able to see their families even after becoming a space marine. They they care, which is the funny part. Yes. Because the seven and a half foot tall giant with flaming red eyes who just reduced a traitor to bubbling metal says, you have nothing to fear, young citizen. Take my hand. If you enjoy fire, melting things, and being the nicer of the Marines, Salamanders are for nice you. Nice ah, Salamanders are awesome. Saga, sneak attacks don't work if you yell it out loud. The Raven much. Guard. Allegiance? Loyalist. Primark, Corvus Corax, a raven, a shadow, an industrial dance DJ. Single word descriptor, stealth. The yep. Raven Guard are the final Loyalist Legion at 19 and hail from the planet Deliverance with Primark, Corvus Corax. If it hasn't been made clear enough already, the Raven Guard are stealth specialists and proficient in all manners of assassination. Yes. Despite this, their signature winged jump pack and double lightning claw look is, well, not very stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> They're named after, of course, the Raven and embody the entire concept of it as a herald of death. They are stealthy, patient hunters that have no problem with waiting and waiting and waiting until the moment to strike is at hand. It's not easy being a stealth faction when your stealth involves people in one ton of power armor, but they find a way. That more oh, yeah. than anything it should not be used to show how ridiculous 40k is. 
even though it is, but rather to show how good the Raven Guard are at their jobs. It's right. not about them sneaking around you without being seen, but it's also about them having lied in wait for so long that it wasn't until they were in striking distance that you even realized they had been there. And also, if you want, you know, edgelord marines with a long black haircut, pale skin, ravens everywhere, if you want to field assassins and snipers abound, then the Raven Guard are for you. It could yeah. be in this something something else about the raven guard the raven guard in and of themselves are legitimately some of the abs like it's because of his gene seed that the raven guard are so good at stealth in fact the um conrad curse was bitter about well he was bitter about a lot of things one of the things he was bitter about with Cor corvus corax is he said that they lit that people that his legion lived in the night, but Corvus's legion owned it. And Nocturne, they never saw the sun, and yet they couldn't pick out the Raven Guard when they were standing right in front of them. It was so it was so well done when the Raven Guard were introduced against the um Night Lords in the Primarch book for Conrad Curse. This very room, it could be you, it could be me, it could even be It was obvious. The Alpha Legion. <laughs> Allegiance, heretic. Maybe. Maybe. Primark, Alpharius, and Omegon. Saboteurs, destabilizers, they're in your walls. Yes. Single word descriptor, espionage. Finally, the 20th Legion. The Alpha Legion, led by Alpharius and Omegon. The only Legion to have two Primarchs who were split as twins. The Alpha mm -hmm. Legion are heretical, we think, and specialize in destabilization of society and armies. Their right. entire shtick is the Hydra, because when you cut off one head, two more take its place. All of the Alpha Legion look exactly like their Primarch. Olive skin, shaved head. All claim to be Alpharius. Yes. All are liars. They yes. make the largest use of sleeper cells and cultists in the Chaos Space Marine factions because it's extremely easy to take over a planet when you poison our water supply, burn our crops, and deliver a plague onto our houses. Where the Raven Guard use stealth and sabotage to eliminate their enemies, the Alpha Legion prefer to weaken them over time with sleeper agents, mm -hmm. impersonations, basically anything you could imagine from a hardcore spy movie or, or Cold War level espionage. Yes. Being Alpharius is not only an honor being alfarius is a requirement there's a story of mm -hmm. someone chasing down an alpha legion agent for years upon years and when they finally catch up with them and they see them they see that the agent is wearing the same face as their pursuer because this was the plan all along yes. to kill him and take his spot. We're talking facial reconstruction surgery. We're talking hacking. We're talking political assassination and impersonation. Everything. They are sp and we're also talking intense brainwashing so they fit into society. Like an, an alpha legionnaire will be implanted into what would, would have been implanted to another legion and would have believed he was in that legion up, down, left, right, into the side until he was activated. And once he got activated, he would not give himself away. It was... Space Marines stuff. in name only, because being a strong stoic warrior is not what the Alpha Legion is interested in. Right. In fact, the Alpha Legion is interested in you not even knowing that the Alpha Legion is a thing. I am Alpharius. You are Alpharius. <laughs> we are all Alpharius in his Lord's glorious army. Thank you everyone so much for watching this, this video. Excellent. I hope you learned a little something. I hope if you were on the fence about what Space Marines you wanted to field, you would now have a better idea of what you want to play. Buy my gamer sub shaker. It's on sale. It's on pre-order. It's ready to go. Just get it. Just get it. Use code Bricky. It's in the description. Just get it. And a huge thank you to all of my all right, so, really good outline. I agree with most of them. I, I threw in my tidbits when I needed to. Um, but, yeah, like, ah, uh, I keep on going back to Perturabo and the 4th, and the reason I keep on going back to the Perturabo and the 4th is because, God, if anybody deserved a painting, a sculpture, anything like that, it should have been Perturabo. It could have been Perturabo. And... I still love the way that Perturabo said, screw this, I'm out, during the Siege of Terra. He legitimately looked to his first captain. I think it was his first captain, I'm not sure. It was a member of the Trident. He looked over at him, 
And listen to this guy say that Mortarian was coming to take his spot so Perturaba could lead the attack. And he was like, mm, that's how it's going to be, huh? All right, everybody, we're leaving. Get the fuck out. We're gone. We're gone. And, and the Iron Wars are like, what? But we're, we're fighting a war. No, we're not. We're done. We're finished. This is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. We're done. And he left. He was done. It was the best. And the best part about it was... The Iron Warrior ships were flying out of, flying away from Terra, and the other legions were sitting there going, "What are they doing?" It was the best ever. This was good. I like this. I enjoyed this. I need to do something like this. I need to make my duelist video for the love of God. In any case, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Brickies, all the Brickies links are going to be in the description down below, and so you can get yourself a waifu drink. Uh, sippy cup if you want to get yourself it go ahead I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put that in the description down below so you guys can get yourself a sippy cup with a hentai girl on there because I know you guys like that in any case um yeah it, all of Bricky's links gonna be down there including my own including my patreon if you guys want to support the channel and join the discord and throw a rock at me um yeah I think that's all that needs to be said I'm gonna bail now I'll catch you guys next time. <sighs> Vulcan is such a good guy. <laughs>